Yeah. <laughs> so we're at the Bitcoin 2015 in in uh, Mexico City. I'm Juan Galt with Disruptic.info, and I'm joined by Sergio Lerner. You are involved with uh, Rootstock. Yeah, I'm the chief scientist of the Rootstock. Hi, Juan. And uh, yeah, and that's uh, uh, I have designed the Rootstock platform, and also I'm working with the core developers to, to make that uh, uh, the first release, which will be in February, probably. Excellent. So you just, you just released the white paper and uh, in sync with this conference. And um, I, don't think, I don't think a lot of people understand exactly what Rootstock is. Uh, my initial impression was that it was a, a, uh, a fork of Ethereum on top of sidechains, which is on top of Bitcoin. And it's kind of competitive to Ethereum. How would you, how would you ex uh, explain that relationship between Ethereum and Rootstock? Yeah, I don't see it, this as a fork of Ethereum. Uh, just because we were working on smart contracts and all team one year before Ethereum, but what we have done is we have implemented uh, the opcodes of the Ethereum virtual machine. So we have Ethereum compatibility at the opcode level. And at the same time, we are providing the same interface for the application, for the distributed application, the interface which is called Web3. So any application you develop for Ethereum, then you can port very easily for the Rooster platform. Okay, so uh, the, the question is if, if, if this is against Ethereum, uh, I think it's not because it just brings uh, more momentum, more traction to development of Web3 applications. So now companies developing Web3 applications can choose and some of them will choose Ethereum, some of them will choose Rootstock, but we are standardizing, we are making this a standard platform. So the, the companies do not have to choose between several different platforms. So at the end, I think it is good for Ethereum and good for Rootstock, of course. Excellent. One of the, one of the security mechanisms that you explained in your talk today, which I don't, didn't quite understand, was related to federation, like yeah. a federated system on, with uh, Bitcoin companies or, or companies that have mm -hmm. significant uh, weight in the system and, and legal sort of support. Can you Talk more a little bit more about that, and maybe respond to the idea that are, are these is the is Rootstock a kind of uh, permission blockchain? No, no. Uh, basically, what we are doing is we are doing uh, this in several stages. In the first stage, the federation is only providing checkpoints for the network. That's a service that the federation provides. So, because the security of the network will not be enough. Uh, until we get to the point we have 51% of the miners, which will, I think will be pretty soon, but we are providing the service, the Federation provides this service. Uh, they run a node in a secure environment, so they, they cannot be easily civil attacked. They have a, a backbone connection between them and, bet and to the miners, so they can provide these uh, checkpoints. They say, okay, my best chain is this, I've seen this block, so nodes not, uh, uh, can detect if they are being civil attack or detect if they are, there is a fork going on. And if that happens, they can just preventively stop processing transactions or stop accepting money, and which is quite, quite a good security measure. Um, but then we have, a, a, in a second stage, we have a, where we will be using a hybrid technology where the federation will be probably able to build their own blocks. And we, we are discussing this, we have a, an implementation of this, but we are not sure if it's, this is gonna be the final implementation we are gonna use. Uh, so this is not going to be in the first release. But essentially, we want to give the Federation some powers to be able to comply with any possible regulation. And at the same time, we want the anonymity of miners, we want the Bitcoin community to feel they are free to use the platform and they don't have to ask permission to anyone. So. It's, it's a challenge, but we are trying to get the best of our worlds, of both worlds. Yeah, it's a big challenge. Yeah. Let, let's go back to mining a little bit. So for those that may not understand sidechains, the idea, as I understand it, is that you, you want miners to merge mine a particular sort of brand of sidechain, and you need, a, you need, basically, miners are gambling all the time, right? Throwing the dice. Mm -hmm. You want those, those results to also count towards the security of Rootstock, but you need more than 51% or so. You want more than 51% of the miners' mining power to support yeah. Rootstock? Yeah. 
th there are several several um, things we can talk about. First one is that, yeah, uh, the, the security of the resource platform came mainly for the merge mining. So uh, miners will be mining bit, uh, Bitcoin, and at the same time they will be mining rootstock with a with a with a merge mining capability, which is something already known. And Namecoin has been doing uh, merge mining uh, without without much success, but they have been doing this. And um, so, in in one side we have a uh, merge mining, and the the mining pools to do merge mining, they they. They, they do this by lowering the difficulty of the blocks. But in, in a sense, they are already doing that because the mining clients need to use a, a small, a, a lower difficulty to provide shares so that the mining server can uh, share the reward in a, in a, with granularity, with low granularity, with, sorry, with high granularity. So the mining clients already provide these uh, blocks with lower difficulty. So those are the blocks that eventually get into the, the rootstock blockchain. Okay, maybe it's kind of complicated to do, to, to. I, I think uh, there will be people out there that I sort of understand that. <laughs> yeah, I think, yeah, of course, yes. I think I sort of get an idea of it, but um, yeah, I'm not an engineer. Um, one thing that I, that I heard, and I, I'm not sure, I may have been completely wrong about this, but um, I believe there's some sort of relationship between, I think, the World Bank or the IMF or something like that. Can you tell us about how you're being funded and maybe uh, address concerns about how that might influence your, your, uh, your, your development of this platform? Mm -hmm. Well, we've been working with a company, which is called CoinBanks, which they are providing uh, financial instruments for banks. And I think that's okay. I mean, the, we, the, we won't let that influence uh, the, 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 key, the key points of, the, of, of course, of the design. We want them to be able to to use the, our platform. We think that we are able to let them use it, but the, our key design uh, points are, are fixed, and there is no way we will be uh, uh, dragged by banks into something that we don't want to to do. So we want to be we want to be a, an open platform. We want to be open source, uh, and we want to be. Uh, open to any developer or any user for uh, using the platform without asking permission. For the sake of transparency, who, can you talk about who are the, the major funders or, or of, of, the, of Rootstock right now? Uh, I cannot because we, the, the agreements are still right. being... Uh, uh, yeah, yeah. So, but yeah, we have our, our, our funders. You will know very soon. And uh, this is key, key people from the Bitcoin community. It's not from the banking industry. It's key people. Uh, from Bitcoin community. So when this is uh, uh, open, there will be no problem with that. Okay. I also heard that you were talking, I think, with uh, Evan Duffield or maybe exploring a governance model and a funding model that is decentralized and sort of internal like Dash's governance model for funding the project. Mm -hmm. So it's a sort of a, for those who don't know, it's kind of uh, using the mining rewards of a blockchain network for things that are that the community votes on and agrees are worthy of of the of the resources is this this seems to solve the best solution that i've heard of to fund public p projects right mm -hmm. are you yeah. looking into yeah we basically have a a, a governance model which will decide which which is the the way to go in the pro at the protocol level not at the implementation level but which will will define what what the protocol is and we, we, we are inviting to that governance to the miners, to the industry, which uh, will participate in Rootstock, to stakeholders of, uh, of Bitcoins in the Rootstock platform, and to full node owners. And there is some technical things uh, for how, how this can happen. For example, to allow full nodes to, to be part of the governance, they have to prove they are full nodes, and we have some protocols to be so they can prove they are have they have fully function nodes. And th that is it's not the same system, but it's something similar to what Dash does. Uh, they have proof of retrieval. We have proof of unique blockchain storage, um, and we have uh, a way so users can prove they have holdings in Rootstock, so they can use this to vote in a proof of stake voting. So I think we have all the ecosystem cover, and nobody is going to feel it's outside of the governance. 
One last question that I think people might wonder about is, how decentralized is Rootstock compared to, say, Ethereum or Bitcoin? Or we're talking about Dash, let's throw Dash into the hat. Yeah. Uh, to answer that, we should define what decentralized is. And it's not easy to define. Uh, one definition is that this, the, the, the definition of decentralized is the, the cost of having a full node. And if you think about having a full node, then we are as, as, as decentralized as Bitcoin is because our, full, uh, our nodes are, uh, can handle a lot more transactions but do not require more space for different reasons. Like we, we will be using probabilistic uh, verification and fraud proofs which allow uh, to, the blockchain to be divided into, into, into nodes, uh, to be split into nodes. And, uh, but, and, and Ethereum, again, it's, uh, in, in, in that sense, it's also decentralized. But then you can think about decentralized as, uh, for example, how decentralized is the mining, the mining power. And, uh, uh, and, and, and in that way, we are as decentralized as Bitcoin is. And if you analyze uh, Ethereum, then mining in, uh, in mining in Ethereum mining pools is also heavily centralized right now. So. Uh, we are not less decentralized as any, one, any of these platforms. Yeah, the third way that you can measure decentralization is about how the wealth is split between all the people. And, and to measure that, you have something called the Gini, Gini would be in English, the Gini Index. And that is a measure of, uh, uh, of if there is a few people having a lot of currency and very, a lot of people having... Uh, very few currency, or if that is approximately uh, the same, I mean. And if you compare the giant index from Bitcoin to Ethereum, then you have approximately the same. So there is no, and so what will be the, the giant index of the Rootstock platform? It's not so important because as you can trade one Rootstock to one, uh, to one Bitcoin, then it's the, the giant index is, is the same because we are using the same token. So in that way, we are as decentralized as Bitcoin can be, or as Bitcoin is at this, this time. Excellent. Is there anything else you'd like to mention about Rootstock, about the maybe what's, what the next steps for development are, or anything that's exciting, anything that you're interested in? Uh, yes, I, I would, uh, yeah, we are launching very soon, and so our, our efforts are concentrated to, to make this first release uh, really solid, and but yes, we have a, a lot of things in the in the works, and one of course is a probabilistic uh, verification, uh, which uh, which brings a lot to scalability, and uh, what else? And we, we have the just-in-time compilation of uh, of the of the of the uh, programs, which will bring again which lower the fees for the contracts execution because it will be much, uh, much faster to run contracts. And I think that those are the two things that I'm more working on at this moment that I like more. Excellent, thank you very much. Thank you very much, Juan. Yeah. Um. Uh. Hello, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed that conversation. It was sponsored by Anarchapulco 2016, the largest anarcho-capitalist conference happening in Acapulco, Mexico, last week of February. It is, um, I was there last year, it was incredible. There was a lot of cyberpunks, entrepreneurs, activists and media people trying to make the world more decentralized, more secure, more peaceful, more prosperous through enterprise. Uh, you're welcome to come. 5% discount with disrupttech.info. Incredible lineup, Jeff, uh, Jeff Berwick, um, Doug Casey, Jeffrey Tucker, Adam Kokesh, Dana Martin, Roger Ver, and a lot more. So um, check it out and uh, help support this conversation with the, if you use the coupon. And, um, you know, have a great day. Enjoy whatever you're doing and subscribe. Ciao.